Hello, this is Paul, to anyone who may be watching. <laughs> and yeah, I'm still using the old blender. Uh, my system is a bit old, and uh, my income is like nothing, because I can't find good work. <laughs> so I'm stuck being broke, and pff, let's get over that. Let's get around that, and get on to the actual subject. Uh, Lowest production quality, but it's still information here that might be useful if you're watching. So what I'm going to cover is the MMD importer, so I'm going to go to user preferences and I'm just going to go up here under the add-ons, type in MMD and I don't even have to get to that D, it just comes up. So I'm going to turn it on, wait a click for it to engage, and there. And now after we turn that on, we see we have a new tab here. So I'm going to delete the default cube, and we'll try MMD tools, and if I expand this a little bit here, we can see it says import model. I don't know how to create it or anything else like that, but I do know how to import it, so import, and it'll be under my blender stuff, because that's where I put it in my case and downloaded and MMD stuff. Of course it's wherever you put it on your system, but in my system it's here and uh, I'll try one like this and I'm not sure what the differences are or what the story is, but if you go and do it import and some models I have no idea why, but the normals are all screwy and stuff and I don't know if it's just a different version of MMD than what the importer uses, or if you can go and fix it, maybe fix the normals. You can try that in edit mode, I suppose. And, oh, control N didn't seem like it did anything. So I don't know what, it, what the deal is, it's just weird like that. So let's start again, because this model doesn't want to work right for some reason. But the importer does work, I'll tell you that. But since I did that, I have to turn it on and press again. I don't always keep some things turned on in my edits, so... This is one of them, it's just... I don't use it that much. It's just something to play with. But if you want to keep it on, you can save it to your settings. Alright. I don't know what the deal is with the weird mouse, so... Under here we go... Blender stuff... And downloaded stuff... And then... Let's see what other one works, uh... I think this one might work... <laughs> oh, this one's weird too. I don't know why they're weird. But, anyhow, just to clear up all the junk, yeah, it brings in a lot of junk. That's why I deleted it before. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> it's faster, trust me. Alright. And there's more than one version of this too. I still don't have PMX. I'm not sure what the difference between PMD or PMX is. But I'll try this one. See, this one actually imports normal and stuff, so I don't know what the thing is with the glitched ones. I don't know what the story is. 
So now you have that, and it's kind of neat. And if you look under it and you select this, you can actually display all the stuff. The loader has a. Well, it doesn't show you here, but you can turn on the visibility of the different parts. The only problem is there's like a language barrier. <laughs> it's, it's I only know English. Uh, yeah, these things weren't exactly made for English speakers. But you'll have things in the rig that are additional. And hide them all. It gets crazy. Which is a little bit of a problem because if you click on them, it shows them, but it doesn't automatically hide them again. You have all the different parts. These are like the, the MMD importer actually creates the meta rig. So, because Blender doesn't have spring bones, so this thing actually creates them for you. And to turn on the spring bones, you go under rigid body and click build. And then it applies them. So all these things are like meta rig stuff. You hide it. You have to go under the armature and stuff like this. Uh, yeah, it's under the armature. You can hide them. So that starts it. So now you have a model that if you uh, run the animation, the meta rig moves and a lot of stuff bounces because the way the physics are, it's just funny. You can adjust the stuff on the meta rig to kind of calm that down. So now you go to a render and you're like, uh, oh, the lighting is so awful. Oh. Well, it's not really that much part of Blender, you know, it's just the default, but you can easily fix that. And since we're under MMD tools, make sure the model selected, and somewhere under here, see, is an option to convert materials for cycles, so click that. And it'll automatically fix all the materials so you don't have to go changing them all in the cycles. And it switches your render to cycles for you. So if your render, yeah, the lighting is still weird. It's kind of dark. And some people say, "Oh, that looks creepy." Well, let me fix the camera so I can look at it as it renders. Da 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 da. Camera. Lock camera to view. Hold down shift and mouse my little button and zoom in a little bit. Here. And then unlock camera from view and hit the home key to bring it in like that. But so now when I render, it'll render where the camera is. But like the lighting is so bleh. <laughs> well, there's an easy way to fix the lighting is you can always add more lights. You can always turn a light to the sun or add a light that is the sun. And let's rotate it so it faces towards there. Make sure the light is set up to use nodes because it just converts the mesh, it doesn't convert other stuff when you switch the cycles. And I'm going to give it an actual sunlight color. Just like. But it'll be pretty harsh lighting, it's still. Make it brighter. And also keep in mind that when you use the sunlight, the strength is a different calculation than when you use a radial light. It's like, uh, one is supposed to be watts and the other is supposed to be well, like watts per surface area. And uh, sunlight is a lot stronger. <laughs> so you know, on a regular light, you'd like crank this up to thousands on a sunlight. You just leave it one or two. And so you can see here's a bright light. And that's the start of it, but another thing that affects light is the world lighting. So you can set use nodes, and 
it picks up the background color when you do this. So you pick a nice warm background color and you render it that way. It casts that background color light as the ambient light. So you can use that. And what I find do, it's worth doing is actually going in Compositor and Materials Compositor. But if you switch to the world settings, you can put gradients or background images and stuff like that. So what I usually do is do a gradient real quick. Uh, color ramp. And I'm going to need coordinates. This is a real quick thing. I showed this in another video. I'll be honest. Factor wrapping. Spread it all out. Well, I guess it all, it's automatically spreads out. But I just like make this and add. Oh, there's my converters. Separate X, Y, Z. And Z is up and down. And that's where I usually put the gradient. So. This handle and my color picker. Get that color. And then instead of something really dark, I'll probably actually I'll just add that. Let's make that bright color. And saturate it. And I believe this is this is okay. Or if you want to see what's going on, you can always use the render preview, and it'll show what's going on with the. So basically, now I have ambient lighting that comes from that gradient. So I hit render real quick, and yeah. And as you can see, the lighting is a lot better. And that's just something that's quick and simple. Another fun thing I'll show you is compositing effects, because if you're going to be animating with this in Blender. And also, this thing can import, uh, well, if I select the character again, it can import the motion files from MMD. So if you know how to work in that, you can import the dances or whatever. And come in. The physics is still a little weird because the way it has to use the meta rig to do it, it won't be exactly the same, but it's pretty close. The only alternative to that is to rig it yourself in Blender, which, <laughs> if you don't know Blender, it's going to be complicated. If you do, it might be worth doing it that way, though. Just because things like the language barrier and stuff, you'll probably want to rename all the stuff. Well, and this, the language barrier is also a problem with materials because all you got are like these numbers and zones. So what I tend to do is go into edit mode and deselect all. And if you select a part in face mode, they'll highlight the material that that faces. So that's something you might want to do is rename all your materials by clicking and highlighting the different parts and you'll see which material it is and then you can name it that way. And so it is a bit of tedious in that regard, but at least you'll know what stuff is. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be like, uh, wah, 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 I have no idea what that says. And, you know, yeah, you, know, you want to go, you want to go and fix it. Unless you know in Japanese and you have the character set, I don't, so. If you do, the more power to you, I guess. Uh, so, what else is there? Yes. Yeah, so now I set that up. I want to show you the compositor. I did mention it, right? So to order to use the compositor, one of the things you want to do is add another render layer like this. Not one of these render layers that's part of the scene, but the render layer that's part of the render set. This will be used later, so I'm not worried about it just yet. That's for freestyle. <laughs> so that's another thing, but it will be under the compositor. So how do I go under compositing? And right now, I see that was for materials compositing. This is for scene compositing, and that is for texture nodes. So we want the one for compositing the scene. 
It says compositing nodes, but it's for scene stuff. So turn on use nodes. And what it'll do is show the render output and then all the stuff you can do to the render output. So what we do now is oh, wrong button. <laughs> Derp. We can start adding input nodes and stuff like color mixers. But in order to really have fun with them, what you need to do is go into render settings. And I don't know if I want to turn on freestyle just yet. But you got to go under film settings right here, which is already expanded. You don't really need to mess with this stuff. You can, it's interesting for certain effects. But what you want to toggle is transparent. And it'll get you on. And there's other stuff like post-processing that's kind of neat. And I believe under... You also have separate passes, which can be used for compositing, which is under where the render layers is for the scene. And you have this scene setting. And... Let's see, custom properties. I'm trying to figure out where the camera is under the... under the render settings. There's one for uh, different cameras and stuff. I'm trying to remember where it is. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Color management. That's it. Yeah, color management under the scene properties here. And if you go to this, you can... I wouldn't mess with much of this stuff again, but if you go under look, you get all the different camera films and stuff, and it will shift the color gamut and stuff. You can also manually change the color curves and stuff for the scene. So under color management, there is some cool stuff there you can play with. But I'm not going to show all that. But it is pretty neat, it's a quick way to get certain appearances. And it will work in your animation. So, where am I going back? Compositing, I made it transparent, which was under here. Click the transparent on, and what that will do is drive your alpha channel. And because I have transparent on, I will also add another scene. And Copy settings, I believe that will work. Uh, the light in the background. And the other, in this scene. <laughs> well, this is part of stuff you have to do for compositing if you want it to. So I have to go back to the main scene. Go to the camera. So I'm just going to use this to pick up the camera light under object. And. Oh, what was it? There's a certain thing I'll create a uh, all right. You'll create a double of it in the other scene. I'm trying to remember how that works. Make links, I believe that is it. Yeah, okay. So what you want to do is make links for your camera object to scene, and I'll link it to the other scene, and what that does is it creates a camera that's attached to this camera in this scene, and as you can see it's orange there. If I move this camera around, it'll move around the other scene, vice versa. But I'm only doing this so I can pick up the background here. Right now there's nothing set, so I can basically Go here and copy the background here, and all it will do is, it'll just, well, it's not showing here, but. Oh, I have to turn off the transparent in this scene. I want the gradient to show up. 
And if I go to this scene, the transparent is still on. Okay. Because what I want to do is use the other scene and then compositing pass. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's complicated. Also, keep in mind this compositing layout is per scene. So when you're rendering, you want to go back to the original scene you started out with. That's another thing that will catch you and confuse you if you don't pay attention. So I said I don't have a super high production quality, but I will inform you what I can. Alright. So now we add another render pass. Or another render layer, but it's a render pass. In this case, it's the first scene, so what we want is scene 001, and it only has one render layer. That's just for the background, because in this one, now that we have it set up the way it is, the background is alpha transparent. But we'll be using that alpha, because the alpha channel... Well, let me add a viewer node. That's not what I want to do. The way I do that is I hold down shift, just add a node there, and then add output viewer. Some people, they like to play with the sockets all the time, and I find that's a pain in the butt, so I just do it like this. And that way I will have my render node and the viewer connected all the freaking time. And... Then this way, I'll join them in the frame, and if I need to move them around, I just move the frame, and it keeps the viewer and actual output together. If I connect anything, it's to that socket there rather than one side. And it'll do both. It's just a little thing I came up with. It's convenient. So. If I render this, or if I go uh, backdrop, right now it's it hasn't updated, but if I render an update, I believe it will be transparent like this. And it will render to different passes, but since they're not connected, see this one only has transparency now. If I zoom in, you see the checkerboard, and you see here there's no background. So what you can do is composite the background back in with a mix, I believe, or not just a mix, an alpha over. Yeah, that's why I'm showing you compositing stuff in addition to FMD stuff. Where is it? Is it da -da? Color alpha. And I believe one of these, I think the alpha one is the bottom one. Yeah. So when you have the alpha with the transparent background goes on the bottom. And then the background like this goes on the top. And see, so now I have the background back again. But what's neat about that is I'm sure you've seen like the mall kiosks with the videos and stuff. You can add input texture. So I'll show you that real quick. Actually, that's one way to do this texture, but I don't have texture set up. What I need is that image texture. So texture. Or image. <laughs> Just what I meant to do is not a texture, but I know there are image textures. And right now there's no image, but we can open one and let's see, where's our viewer here? Let's have tux penguins, why not? We could have the nebula, but I think that one's huge, it tends to crash on my system. So I'm going to go with the Tux Penguins, open image. And now we have our background with the Tux Penguins. Okay, and this is kind of fun. Because you can blur it and blend it. And let's make this an overlay. So now we have the pink background showing through the Tux texture. And we can do stuff like... Uh, 
Uh, what is it? Distort. And. Let's see, is it transform? Or translate? It's under distort. Translate. Yeah, translate has the wrap, so let's do that. So now we can set it up to wrap and we can scale our text down. So we can go both axes and since this is a tiling texture, we can transform it. And you can, depending on if you put the transform before or after, it will also affect it because this does angle. So if you put it before, right now the scale is one so nothing's happening, but if we scale too small. Alright, this should be this should be wrapping. I don't know why it's not. Maybe it doesn't work with this. Maybe this has to go after it, but I was hoping it would go before and after, huh? Alright. I guess it has to go after. So in other words, one way you could rotate the thing that's being tiled, but I guess it doesn't work in this case. So it has to go after. <laughs> Alright, I haven't tried it yet. But... Translate. That's the translate. I wanted to uh, distort. It's where I could use the scale one. Work with this. Yeah. And this will rotate each of the tiles. So rotate works with it at least. But the other one, which was stored, transform, you gotta put afterwards, and afterwards it should work. So let's scale that down. Okay, that's too much. But if you did it this way, if you had a simple image that was like a PNG with the transparency, you could get around the borders, so it doesn't work exactly in this. But the idea was, is you could rotate each of these things before the translation for tiling and everything that is tiled would rotate. But in this case, it doesn't work so well. But we scaled it down. Well, the tiling isn't working quite that well. I guess it only tiles at that scale. But you can still uh, rotate it as a whole. In this case. So you can do like these funny animated backgrounds with that. So that's kind of neat. And I'm going to dim it down on the overlay. So. Let's make it a, a screen maybe. Perhaps you multiply. There. So what we're doing is we're getting that background pass from the outer render and pulling it through here. And I said I was going to add freestyle. So let's add freestyle. <laughs> Since we're compositing and I did that outer render pass. So go to default. And this render layer freestyle doesn't show as a pass here, but you have to turn it on here. So when you turn it on here, then it should show up over here. By default, it will be turned on this render layer, I believe, yes. So we turn it off on this layer, but then we go back up to this layer, and we add a line set. And that will give you freestyle on this layer. So we can turn off this layer. Keep that one on. And what else? And on this set here, we want to... Where is it over here? There is a way right here to set the layer samples. So... On our layer that has the freestyle, 
it will render the same amount of samples out of the layer it doesn't have it unless you set the number here so we'll set the number something low like five because we're just rendering the freestyle speaking of just rendering the freestyle we go here where is it on here right it's on here okay so this is the layer that's just set for freestyle. We can turn off all the other stuff, so none of this will render just the freestyle. Keep in mind that this render layer pass, which we do want on, we want the freestyle turned off. We don't need the freestyle here. And then this one will still be set to zero on the samples. Leave that alone here. And this will use the samples of our main render, which I suppose I could turn up a bit. So let's turn this up to 30 something. It's still very low, you want to turn it up. But for animation, you may want to get away with it being low. And speaking of animation, you turn that little clock on so your uh, seed for each frame changes. And clamp direct, I usually go 8. Clamp and direct, I usually go three. And that will help get rid of the firefly graininess noise. Depending on what your lighting is doing. Yeah, I'm showing you a lot of weird stuff, so. Right now, I see it because the compositing is set up. It'll render the first pass. And it'll render the next pass with the freestyle, which we don't really see because it's uh, alpha masked. And then it'll render the background. And then it'll composite everything back together. Go under the compositor. So we have this render and our freestyle render. And let's put another alpha over here. And let's put another input render layer. So we see here we have the character one, but if we switch to render layer 01. As you can see, it is just the freestyle lines. So if I go add input and where is it? It's, it's under color alpha over. And now we go image the freestyle lines. It adds elf, the freestyle lines back in. But what's neat is now I can go add color mix, I believe. Actually, I can use this, but put in alpha as. Wait. There's a way to do it here. Uh, there is a way to change the color of the lines. I'm trying to remember how it does. Maybe I need another alpha over. Ah. There is a trick to this. I know it. <laughs> or it could be the stage I am uh, adding it on here. Could be it. I was playing around with it before. And I know I can change the color of the lines and the effect of the lines. So what we could do is filter and blur the lines. And there. But see, it lets you do the freestyle pass separate there. So now I have a blurry or softer freestyle line here. And since the alpha over lets you mix it, you can turn down the strength of the lines and have them real light. And that you can't do if you just kept the freestyle pass together. This is something you gotta do through compositing. So it gives you more freedom with what you can do than just 
freestyle pass line. I know it has all the settings under here if you go under here and play with this and edge types and stuff, but this gives you even more freedom to the things you can do to it through the compositor, which is really neat. And since I did the character with its alpha, so if we were to take the character's alpha, I'll show you. Just draw it over here. It's a black and white image, and you can use this to drive another pass, just this alpha output of that, which is something I am going to show you. So, what we do is we mix this back in. And take the alpha output and store blur. Let's do color mix. Put the alpha in as the first image. We'll change this to multiply. And we'll put this to whatever color we want. Let's say funky glowing green. So now if we hook this in behind our alpha over. Actually this will have to flip flop up here. Cause let's see. Run the alpha over. I actually think it goes below. It's funky. So, if I plug this image in here, yeah, I'll have that. So, I am getting the green there. It's blocking the rest of the background. I want to say. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with the compositor, I just know I can do this. Maybe I should pause it till I find it. That would be an idea there, wouldn't it? Alright, so I'll pause it and then I'll find the node I set up I need and then I'll talk about it when I get it in there. I'll save you time on your end, huh? Alright. Alright, back again. <laughs> For you, it's like less than a second. Okay. So what I needed was to set the alpha of this alpha channel pass that I was routing back through in here. And what I did is I ran it through the alpha over, so when I set the alpha on the alpha pass, it creates a mask, which is then cropped out because it has the set alpha applied to it with its own alpha again. But I set it to a color so I can create this glowy background because it's just like the alpha black and white with the green applied. But then when I set the alpha mask, it crops it out. But I am uh, using a glare and uh, streaks and stuff applied to it. And it creates this glowing background because the character is on top of it. And the mask is the same shape of the character. You can create this cool little glowing effect. So to do that I just blurred it slightly. Multiplied it and applied the color I want it to glow at. And I see it updates. And you can... You can actually animate these things too. You can change like uh, color, HSP, and all that stuff. You can keyframe these settings under here, just so you know. And it's kind of fun. I did it with a little practice video. It wasn't very long because I don't have a lot of computer to throw at it. But if you do, you can do these cool effects. So now you can have your characters like glow with the superpowers or whatever. And then you pass it through the compositor and all this. And when you render to Compositor, it will do this for each frame you output. So if you render to like a series of PNGs or uh, open, uh, what is that one? I don't use it much, but if you render open EXRs, EXRs have better color depth, but they're specifically for like video production stuff. Because they're made to have that for compositing, but you can work with PNGs as slider file format. And you composite it all together, and you can get cool effects like this. So if I go to the main default render, and 
set this up to actually have a good sample level like 60 and then render it out it will render each pass and you can apply effects to each layer like as you separate them from compositing and stuff oh. and it's rendering the different passes Is and that's just the plain background and it makes the tux in it and that's the composite finished result. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with MMD and Blender using that little plugin and doing some fun compositing stuff and you can get something like this. Alright. Have fun, enjoy, hope you learned something. <laughs> Even though I don't have the prettiest uh, tutorial videos, they do have information and that's what I'm about here. So have fun. <laughs>